Hi there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brackus Creations and in this video I'm going to be recapping a Macintosh Color Classic. Now I know what you're thinking, I've done recapping videos before, but in this one I'm going to be going over a few different things, so hold on to your hats. Just a quick reminder, if you do like the content in this video, please subscribe to my channel. Okay, so the Macintosh Color Classic is one of the many computers that suffers from leaky electrolytic capacitors, which I do go over in my other videos. Um, if you want to find out more about it, you can do a Google search for capacitor plague. But the short story is that there are lots of computers from a particular vintage that have these little surface mount electrolytic capacitors and they, after a few years, they leak. Um, and this is a very good example of one that has leaked terribly. Um, you can actually see it all here. I think someone's actually had a go at cleaning it, which is fine because there are a lot of people uh, on the web that are saying, uh, you know, if you get leakage on your on your logic board, just clean it. And and you know, look, that'll buy you a bit of time. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really, you know, that's essentially that's uh, sorting out the uh, symptom, but not the cause of the problem. Um, the, uh, these electrolytic capacitors do need to be replaced. Um, and the, uh, there are uh, quite a few problems that do occur with these color clashes. This one doesn't work. And so the whole hope here is that after um, recapping it and then cleaning it, it will bring it back uh, to its former glory. But of course, there could be some other problems because the capacitor leakage can, can cause corrosion on the board and it may have actually eaten through, so the corrosion may have eaten through some of the some of the traces. And the main area of concern is it's actually just here on the logic board up there. So this little chip here, that's the sound chip. And you can see he lives right in the middle of a bad neighborhood. He's got a couple of leaky electrolytic capacitors here and a couple of leaky electrolytic capacitors there. And that has a tendency to leak and cause corrosion and trace damage around this chip. So that's one of the things that I would generally always look at with a Color Classic when I'm recapping it, because um, with some of the other computers, you just basically recap and that's it. But with the Color Classic, there are often instances where you recap and it still doesn't work. And it's usually because of this guy. But we'll go over some of that stuff at the, um, uh, under the microscope a little bit later. Um, another area that can sometimes be an issue is over here. Uh, near the uh, near the battery, there's another um, uh, surface mount electrolytic capacitor here, and just above it is a little crystal oscillator, and it has a tendency sometimes to eat through the traces around that area as well. So they're, they're the, the things that we're going to be looking out for, and of course the other thing about the Color Classic, which, oh, we just love, is these three electrolytic capacitors just down here, just going to be showing that there, those there, that sit right above this plastic. So if you're planning to play along at home, you just have to be super careful when you work around here, otherwise you will melt that plastic. So let's uh, let's go and have a look at this under the microscope to start off with, and we'll just see how bad it is. All right, so to start off with, um, I'm just looking around. That is the sound chip there. Let's get a little bit of focus happening there. And that's one of the electrolytic capacitors over there. So I do not know why this is so hazy through the microscope at the moment. It is possibly because it's quite cold. Uh, and I think I might be getting some condensation on the lens. But um, we can have a look down here and you can see that trace under there doesn't look too crash hot. Uh, if I just get a scalpel and... Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's corrosion underneath it, but the copper is still intact, so... Um, I'll clean that up a little bit, and I'll put a new coating on it. But um, that's it's not that looks like it's still intact. Uh, it's these traces down the bottom here, and now you can actually see here. There's uh, evidence of toothbrush cleaning, uh, which is fine. I don't, you know, that's all fine. Um, but it, there's definitely some residue being left behind here, um, and I have to say I don't particularly like the look of that little via there as well. If we just have a look at that one there, you can see that there's quite a bit of corrosion going on around there. Again, the copper still appears to be intact, so we might be okay, 
but uh, but you get the gist. So I guess one of the really important things that I always say about these is uh, this isn't something that affects some of these computers. If you have a Macintosh Color Classic and it hasn't been recapped and it's still working, you are living on borrowed time. They all leak and they all will need to be recapped if you want to maintain them, if you want to keep them running. So I am regularly, you know, a lot of the time people jump on the forums and they go, hey, my Color Classic stopped working. And, you know, and then the first response we get from people is, has it been recapped? And it gets a little bit tiring to hear that, but at the end of the day, that is the first thing that should be done. If a, if a uh, Color Classic is not working and it hasn't been recapped, your capacitors are probably about a 90% chance they're the problem. So um, now one of the things that I do get asked with my videos is, can I remove a capacitor without a hot air gun? Because as I've said before, I like to remove the, the capacitors with a hot air gun because it heats both sides uh, of the um, capacitor at the same time. So both pins melt at the same time, you can then lift them off. If you're doing it with soldering on, you can only melt one side at a time. And of course, there um, there's a lot of discussion at the moment about removing these capacitors by twisting them and pulling them off or just giving them a yank um, with a pair of pliers. I don't recommend it. Um, you know, I mean, those, those people that do it that way, that's, that's up to them. But I should mention that I have had boards at this workbench where someone did try and remove the capacitors via the twist and pull method and tore off pads. And then it was here on my workbench for me to repair pads on the, uh, on the logic board. So um, there is always a danger that the computer will get damaged when if you decide to go with that method. So I don't recommend it, can't recommend it, will never recommend it. So first of all, I want to remove a capacitor without using a hot air gun. Now I'm going to maybe you do one of these two. Let's say I'm going to remove this guy here, 47 microfarad, 16 volt. Um, now this solder here is old and crunchy and crusty and can be, you might find that as soon as you apply some heat to that, it just goes rock hard and black. Um, so the first thing I would do if I was wanting to take this off without a hot air station is douse it liberally in some flux. So this is a good quality gel flux. This is Amtech. Links are below. Um, I should actually mention that I, in my most recent order, I got this little f sort of free uh, tube of a new type of Amtech flux. So I'll give that a try today. Um, We'll see what it's like. Uh, it's yeah. So it's apparently the next wave. All right. So I've got uh, I've got some flux on there, and the next thing I want to do is I want to introduce some new solder with the old solder. Um, these all have uh, lead-free solder, and this is leaded solder. I want to add some leaded solder, bring the temperature down, and also potentially push away some of the uh, old scungy solder. So let's get that there. Just melting that. Now that's really, that's getting quite shiny, which is good. I'm impressed with that. So now I'm going to spin it around and do the other side. And we'll just get some in here, being very careful not to melt anything plastic on the board. Let's get in there. Again, adding some new solder, pushing some old solder out. There we go. Okay, so what I've done now is I've basically added some new solder to those to those pins. And the next thing I'm going to do is remove it. Now that might seem silly. Why am I adding solder just to remove it? As I say, what you're attempting to do is kind of clean up those joints. So you're trying to, as I say, get rid of some of the old crunchy solder and add some of the, your, your new solder with a lower melting point because it's leaded. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some solder wick. So this is some um, 1.5 millimeter, sorry, Two, two millimeter good wick um, uh, solder braid, which is designed, to, which it's, it's uh, um, got flux in it, and it's just designed to soak up any solder. Very handy stuff when you're doing this sort of work. So what I'm going to do, and it's extremely cheap here. I should mention that this is really, really cheap. This stuff, so there's no excuse to not have it. I mean, you know, 
whether you might have a hot air gun or a solder sucker or something like that. I mean, this is just, this is a few dollars. So, right, so we get a bit of wick here. And what my intention is now to just soak up as much of that solder that I added as possible. And of course, I, I care very little about what happens to this capacitor because it's going to go. So I don't mind if I melt the plastic a little bit on that. Right, so I'm soaking up as much of that solder as I can. I'm going to switch to the other side. I'm going to melt as much of this and suck it up as I can. There we go. Now, I'm not sure if you can actually see it, but we've actually exposed the pin here, which is what we want. What's that? What that's showing is that there's a lot less solder on it now. Um, we can see that pin there. Okay, so the next step in removing this is gently, gently. What we're going to do is we're going to apply heat at one side. So I've removed as much solder as we can, but there will still be solder there in between the pin and the pad. And we're going to heat one side and we're going to put it in there and we're going to lift this up very gently. Can you see how I lifted that up ever so gently? Hold it up there until the solder cools. So now we've actually got it so that only one side is soldered, but we are being super, super careful not to bend up too high. Now I've got to flip it around again. And I'm going to hold the, the, uh, the capacitor this time in my tweezers and apply heat to this side. And look at that. Off oh, she comes. Piece of cake. So let's go through that process again. So again, this is the removal of capacitor without, um, without using a hot air gun. So hot air station. So start off with our flux. Idiot. There we go. Then we get our new solder. <coughs> you probably couldn't see that because it was out of camera. Sorry about that. I have a much wider field of view through the microscope. So we've added our flux here. We're now going to add some new solder. Melt that. Get the old solder out of the way and put the new solder on. We've actually taken some away there as well, which is quite good. Flip around the other side. I might do it that way, actually. Get our new solder, melt the old, push the old out of the way. There we go. Right, so then we've replaced the old solder with the new as much as possible. Then we get our wick. Uh, when the wick gets filled up with solder, you just trim the end off with a bit of with a couple of side cutters there. So get the wick and there we go. Suck up that solder, suck it up. And then onto the other side. And suck it up. See if I can get it out. There we go. So I've got the solder off from, from that side. Now we just do the gentle leverage here, applying the heat to this side, gently lifting it till we get a bit of air under the pin. Hold it until the solder cools. Now this one is still solid, so I can actually tell that there, there is still some solder underneath that. So it doesn't wiggle the way the other one did. But I'm going to do this side first. We just probably have to do this one as a three-step process rather than two. So again, applying some heat. Lift that side up very gently. This one holding that there. Now this one is good. This one's it's clear on this side. So we go back to this side. Hold this with the tweezers. Apply some heat. And off she comes. So that's the way you can do it just with a soldering iron if you've only got a soldering iron. I just wanted to demonstrate that process because I have been asked by a few people, can it be done? Yes, it can be done very, very carefully. Um, so that's basically that. I'm now going to remove the remaining uh, capacitors and I'm not going to uh, film that because if you want to see me do that in another... Actually, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll just show you a couple of things here. When I'm using um, hot air around here, it's very, very easy to melt this serial number sticker. Now, well, who cares about a serial number sticker? Someone might. So uh, I generally do have to be fairly careful around here, um, either using a, you know, sort of taping something over top of that serial number sticker, because if someone gets really, really precious about the serial number sticker, actually, this is probably a fairly good candidate to use the method I just spoke about here. But what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to try my new fancy and take flux.
So this is this uh, VS213ATF. I don't know much about it other than when it was sent to me as part of my recent Flux purchase, I chucked it in for nothing and they said, this is the new wave, new generation. Um, so the big cheese. So um, let's just see. I'm going to use it for the removal of this capacitor here. So we're going to put some there. Ready? Whoopsie. So this stuff looks more like Vaseline than it does flux. Um, I don't know how well it works, but I have to admit that it being opaque like that's a bit of a pain because I do like to be able to see through. I know the other one's not completely see through, but it's le at least partially translucent. You can see through it a bit. So I can't say I'm terribly thrilled about that. That could be the, uh, the decider for me with this one. Yeah, I can't see where I'm going. There we go. Okay. It smells nice. What does it smell like? It smells like something. Um, hmm. I know you're not supposed to be sitting here sniffing these fumes, but it does smell nice. Now, this one's a, a little bit different to the one I did before in that there was a lot more scungy, crunchy solder on the end. So I had to work on it for a bit longer, just sort of pushing, prodding, adding solder until I get this nice little shiny sort of bead happening down here rather than a black a black scungy one. Um, it could also be maybe this flux isn't as good, but you know, I'm going to give the flux the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so here's the other one here with our opaque flux, which I really do not like. That's some more. There we go. That one went well. So okay, it wasn't the flux. It was definitely that pin. All right. So there. Uh, once again, now we get our wick. Suck up as much solder as possible. I just sucked a lot off my uh, soldering iron then. And then some more. There we go. Okay. Once again, get our tweezers. Lift one side. Get this hot. Solder melting. This one's being a little bit stubborn. If that happens, try the other side first. <clears throat> so let's flip around to this side and see how we go here. Now the, the main challenge we have is we've got this, <coughs> excuse me, this plastic, um, plastic PDS slot, and I don't want to melt that. Okay, so flying the heat to this side and then just lifting it slightly, and that's come up fairly well. That's actually. It's moving quite well, so now we come back onto this side again and apply some heat to there. And look at that, came away beautifully. All right, so there's our third one. As I say, I'm not going to bother demonstrating that process anymore. I'm now just going to whip the rest of these off with my hot air. Um, down here, as I've mentioned, we have the challenge that we have all this plastic thinning going on here. As part of that uh, connector at the bottom that plugs into the, uh, the rest of the computer. And so we have to come back to my trusty little um, uh, sort of heat shield that I use, which is my little spring hooked onto a, um, <clears throat> um, a box cutter blade. And then we can just slot that into there like so. And that will just provide some heat protection when I run the hot air along. So let's start from one side and work our way across. Because these are in close proximity, I generally remove them all at the same time because uh, once the board heats up, then the next ones come off easier than the first one. So whoop, drop the tweezers, there we go. Start here, start applying some heat. Melting the plastic and caring very little about that. See those beads coming out? Those are, they're coming out from underneath all that crunchy stuff. Okay, that first one off. All that crunchy coating on the outside of the solder goes hard, and then the uh, 
liquid solder melts underneath and pops out. Okay, off she comes. Okay, so that's three we have now removed. And no melted plastic. Yay. So some of the, I do generally see problems around here. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'll just quickly clean some of these. I'll grab my flux and I'll put that on there and there and there and there and there. And I'll add some solder, some new fresh solder, and then I'll clean it up with my wick. So I'll just put the new solder there. Again, being super careful not to melt the plastic there. There we go. These pads are coming up like really well. Um, they look great. So once that crunchy stuff comes off. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Now we get our wick. And we apply it there. Take the all the solder away. Just leaving a nice sparkling clean pad. And you can see a little bit of corrosion going on down there joined to that pad going down to that veer but I don't think there'll be any problem with that okay so there we get our wick again cleaning the pads cleaning 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 I um where necessary I generally do a bit of rubbing with the, uh, the wick to clean up the pads. It doesn't really appear to be necessary here. And of course, rubbing always gives you the chance that you will uh, take the coating off some of these other traces. And when you take that coating off, you then need to you know, cover it again with a bit of UV solder mask, because if it's exposed, you run the risk of when you put the new cap on, accidentally creating a short. Um, now we have here, I'm just cleaning this with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip or cotton bud as we call them here in my native land. Um, and we, that's cleaned up quite well, but you can see there's quite a bit of corrosion going on here. If I just grab a scalpel, this UV mask will just lift up because the copper has corroded underneath it. And so the mask is just floating on top of it. Um, and I will clean that up a bit, try and scrape some of that corrosion off. Uh, it'll get cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner and then I'll put a new layer of uh, UV solder mask onto it. Um, this little resistor here, when I've had heat applied to it, it has kind of cracked a little bit here, uh, but I don't believe that is going to be a problem. Um, I believe there is still contact being made there, so I'm not going to do anything about that. Once it's cleaned, if it still looks ugly, you know, once it's been cleaned, I'll, uh, I'm, I might sort of uh, tidy it up. Actually, you know what? What am I talking about? Let's do it right. I'm going to add some solder to this. That little halo around it is basically just because there's all this uh, flux and stuff. And then the light on the microscope is a ring, so it creates that little ring reflection. It's not like there's some sort of special magical highlighting tool on that component. Okay, look at that. A little bit more flux. A nice round looking joint. There you go, look at that. Okay, so that's looking a lot cleaner and tidier now. So, and of course, a lot of these other joints are going to come up looking a lot better once it's been through the cleaner. Okay, so we have already removed one, two, three, four, five, six of the capacitors. Um, as I have mentioned before, when it comes to doing any sort of recapping, it's good to have a guide as to where everything goes afterwards. I have my little cheat sheet, which I will put a link to in the uh, description which is essentially just a pick of a Color Classic Logic board with all of the different rating capacitors, rating, uh, capacitance and voltage ratings. 
are marked out and where they go so that if you whip these all off you know where all the new ones go um, but uh, <coughs> um, if you don't have this you can always just take a photo to start off with because thankfully these little these old capacitors all have the um, rating and voltage written on them which makes life easier so um, okay so I'm going to continue now with um, my uh, uh, removal of the capacitors cleaning the pads and then I'll put new ones on okay so all of the capacitors have been removed all the pads have been cleaned and this is now ready for some new capacitors to go on uh, it doesn't look too bad. I'm actually pretty pleased with um, uh, the way it looks around the uh, the areas of leakage. I don't think there's any trace damage. So with a bit of luck, this will just be a recap and a clean, and that will be all it needs. So I am going to be replacing the electrolytic capacitors with tantalums. Okay, so we are going to need one 10 microfarad 16 volt. Let's take from my little supply of capacitors. Uh, two 100 microfarad 6.3 volts. Come on, fiddly. And then we're also going to need 647 microfarad 16 volts. Not too many capacitors on this, only nine. Um, some of the boards have an awful lot more. Four, five, six. Okay, so that's all my uh, new caps ready to go on. I'm just going to do one or two to start off with, and uh, and then that's it. Okay, so let's start with our one lonely little little guy. That's the uh, ten microfarad sixteen volt, uh, which I just put over. here. Um, now, as usual, the process that I use, I add a nice liberal amount of flux. I get the capacitor, I position it where I want it, keeping in mind that uh, unlike electrolytic capacitors, the stripe is on the positive side. So if I was replacing this with electrolytic, the stripe would be the other way around. Um, but this is a tantalum, the stripe is on the positive side, and so the stripe here matching up with the little positive um, sort of icon on the board there. Now these uh, very very similar to the width of these pads so you don't get a whole lot of room for soldering them so it's very careful to position them very carefully I then get my soldering iron I put a little bit of solder onto the tip bum, bum, and I hold this in position as centered as I possibly can how about, how about that yep. centered as I possibly can and then come on Some days it's harder than others. Okay. Yeah, that solder has taken, as you can see, if I give that a bit of a, a push, it, uh, it doesn't move. But I'm just going to hold it down and just give it another rub. There we go. It is slightly crooked, so a thousand apologies. Um, spin it around, do the other side. Grab some solder, solder onto the tip of the soldering iron. There we go. Okay, so how do we know that that is, has taken on both sides? We give it a little bit of a nudge with our tweezers. Nudge, 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 nudge. And there we go, we've got, uh, we've got uh, that first one all positioned, ready to go. So then we have two 10 micro, sorry, yeah, 100 microfarad 6.3 volt, and they go up here next to the sound chip. So here we see a little bit of corrosion where the uh, UV mask has come away. Um, I'm going to be putting new caps under here. Nice liberal amount of flux on both of those. Then we get I'm going to just plonk them down. Now they're positives facing inwards with these. So that one in there, stripe facing in. And that one there, stripe facing in. So whenever I'm uh, 
soldering these, I always start with the easy side first. So this one, I think we've got a bit of room on that side there. So I'll start with that side. Once again, grab some solder. Holding the capacitor nice and still. That's my chicken going off out there. I think she's just laid an egg. She's letting the world know. Okay, push it down. Got a few what? One of the things that I do with my particular soldering technique, technique, technique. Uh, one of the things I do with my soldering technique is I tend to work with a fairly high temperature um, soldering iron. I've got this one sitting on around about 450 degrees C at the moment, which is really hot. It's actually the hottest that this soldering iron will do. Um, but what I tend to do is I regulate that heat with the amount of time that I have the soldering iron on whatever it is I'm soldering. So um, you'll see that when I do this soldering and I don't really dwell and linger with the, uh, the, the, the soldering iron on the pad. I'm just gonna flip this around the other way. Sorry about that. Zoom, zoom. Um, and I'll just demonstrate that when I do this side here. So I'm gonna hold that in position. I'm gonna try and make it match up position of the other one. And I just do it like that. So you see how quickly I ran that across there? Um, the solder melts really easily because I've got it such a high temperature, but I don't let it sit there. Um, and that's one of the ways that I get these really nice, um, clean joints there. Um, okay, so we've got, now I've got to wish that uh, chook would shut up. Do this one in the middle. Boom. There we go. And then flip him around. Probably a little bit too much solder on that one, but I won't tell anyone if you don't. Uh, okay. And there, pushing down. And there we go. Again, being very careful not to melt the plastic of this PDS slot. Okay, so that's three capacitors on. I've got another six to do. I'm not going to film all six because that's just extremely boring. So the next thing you see will be this board all finished. All right, so that is all of the capacitors now replaced with new ones. <clears throat> now, I always go through my three-point check, and that is, first of all, to check that all of the right capacitors are in the right place. So I will go through and look at all of the numbers on these to make sure that they're the right numbers in the right spot. Uh, the second thing I check for is to make sure that they're all the right polarity. So I've got the positive facing the right way and the negative facing the right way. I go through and double check that. And then the third thing I check is make sure that I applied solder to both sides of the, um, the capacitor. Sometimes when you're doing a group, you might do a whole bunch of left sides and then you spin it around, do a whole bunch of right sides and you might just accidentally miss one. So I do those three things, make sure make sure it's secure, make sure it's a right, right way around and then the right one is there. And then once I'm uh, happy that, that, is, uh, that it's all correct, uh, the next thing is to go into the cleaner. Um, now when I clean these, I clean them with uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I've talked about ultrasonics before um, mine is not a particularly expensive ultrasonic cleaner. It's one hundred, couple of hundred dollars, something like that, bought off eBay. It's 10 litres, so a board like this will fit into it quite well. Uh, it has a, uh, a heated um, a sort of bath in there, so you can bring it up to uh, a higher temperature. I have it set at about 50 degrees Celsius. That is a good temperature for loosening up the flux that's on this and, and indeed anything else there that just sort of softens it a little bit. And then I use a cleaning product uh, called Clean Tech, and it is specifically designed for cleaning off things like flux and electrolyte and gunk off these boards without doing any damage to the, uh, the metal, the traces, the pins, anything like that. The plastic is all safe. The only thing that does have a bit of a uh, get, get a bit knocked around by that uh, fluid is aluminium. So if I put a board in with uh, uh, aluminium. Uh, sort of a radial electrolytic capacitor, sometimes the aluminium gets a little bit blackened, but it doesn't do it any damage, it doesn't look too crash hot. Um, so that's only if I leave it in, the, in there for a while, if I put one in and forget to take it out again. So, um, so this is now ready for cleaning, so I will uh, drop this into the ultrasonic cleaner. It'll probably, I'll give it probably about uh, five minutes on that side, um, and then I'll probably give it about 10 minutes on that side, Usually I would only use do about five minutes, but because this one is so scungy, I would like to have this side get a little bit of extra cleaning. 
Uh, and then once I've done that, we can take it out. We can have a look and see uh, how it looks. Okay, so I don't normally film this bit, and that's because the uh, uh, this alcohol bath that I use is permanently situated directly under where I have my cameras mounted, which makes it very difficult for me to film it. But I've moved it here, and so basically this is the board that has now been ultrasonically cleaned. It is clean, but it's still wet and still has some of that detergent on it. So I've got this container here full of isopropyl alcohol, and I just drop that inside there, give it a little swoosh around. Got a little bit of scunch in there, but not much. Give it a little bit of swoosh around in the alcohol there. Make sure that it gets a good rinse and that it's uh, pushed any water out of any little crevices so that all the remains is the alcohol. And of course, alcohol has a much lower boiling temperature, so it will make it dry a lot quicker. So that's the board there now, clean and all covered in alcohol. And the next step is I will now put it into my toaster oven. So pop it in there. This toaster oven is actually fan forced, so it works quite well. I've got this set on about 70 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna put this on for about an hour. So that'll sit in there for about an hour, and then after that, we'll see how it looks. All right, so here is the board now clean and dry and recapped. And if we have a look at this, uh, looking here at the sound chip, which uh, uh, I talked about before, which is often the, uh, the cause of problems with these, uh, it's come up incredibly clean. I really don't think there are any issues with the traces at all. And other than these ones here that are exposed, I'm going to coat them uh, so that they're no longer exposed. But apart from that, it's, it's looking really, really good. Um, some of those really bad areas of... Uh, uh, of sort of dirty, scungy corrosion around here. Uh, this is that one I showed you before that's near the uh, crystal oscillator, and you can see that um, these are all clean as, clean as a whistle. Um, and, uh, and so I would be amazed if this one didn't just flat out work as it is. I don't think this is going to need any more work to be done to it. Um, so... Uh, so there really is only one more thing I can do, and that's to take this Color Classic board and plug it into a Color Classic and see if it works. Okay, so I have got the uh, recapped logic board inside this uh, Macintosh Color Classic shell. It's actually a Performer 250, but it's basically the same thing. Um, and so this is the moment of truth. I've got power and a keyboard connected up, and let's see what happens. And that's the sound of a happy chime. Um, one of the things you can always tell with uh, Color Classics is just before you get the chime, you get a little pop sound. And uh, when you hear that pop, that's as good as hearing the chime because that pop tells you that it's working. Um, and as you can see, it's starting up uh, into System 7.1, which is installed on this computer. So that is what I call a successful recap. Thank you for watching. Um, but uh, the next step is to clean the one that I missed.